Welcome to the second part of our videos about Hungarian World War II armor. While the first video covered the inception of the Hungarian armor branch and locally produced vehicles, this part will cover the task project, the use of Hungarian tanks on the battlefield, and the use of foreign vehicles in Hungarian service. One of the last and most advanced attempts to create a modern vehicle for the Hungarian army was the TAS tank. Unfortunately for the Hungarians, they lacked the production capacities to actually produce this vehicle in sufficient numbers. The built prototype, possibly two prototypes were built depending on the source, was destroyed in Allied bombing raids against the Hungarian factories in 1944. The TAS tank hunter version, supposedly armed with the 8.8cm gun, while often mentioned to be real, was actually never intended to be built by Hungarians and was not a real project. Hungary got its first chance to get back some of the lost territories with the support of its Axis allies during the Vienna Arbitral Award in 1938. The Hungarians used this document to take parts of southern Slovakia and southern Ruthenia. Hungary would acquire Czechoslovakian territories thanks to the secessionist movement that arose in Ruthenia, eastern Czechoslovakia. By the end of September 1939, this region was declared as an Ukrainian autonomous region. This short-lived and non-recognized Carpatho-Ukraine state had, from the start, complicated political relations with Hungary due to previous lost Hungarian territories. It managed to form a 2,000-man strong Carpathian Guard which attacked the Hungarian-held town of Munkac in early 1939. By 18th March, the Hungarians officially annexed Carpatho-Ukraine territories. By mid-March 1939, Czechoslovakia was completely taken over by the Germans who created the puppet state of the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia. Slovakia, with German pressure, declared independence from Czechoslovakia. Seeing a new opportunity to potentially acquire new lands, on 17th March, Hungarian officials demanded that Slovakia give away parts of Ruthenia. While initially agreeing to this, on the 23rd, a short engagement between the Slovakian and Hungarian forces took place. The Hungarians used the 2nd Motorized Brigade, equipped with three light tank companies and one platoon of Fiat 3000Bs. In addition, Four light tank companies belonging to the 1st and 2nd Cavalry Brigades were employed. During this short war, a Hungarian 3.7cm anti-tank gun crew managed to disable a Slovak LTVZ-35 tank. This was recovered by the Hungarians and, after it was repaired, was used for training. In addition, one Tatra armored car was also captured and used for the same purpose. Two days later, on the 25th, due to German insistence, Slovakia ceded the disputed land to the Hungarians. The Hungarian armoured forces unexpectedly came into possession of a small number of Polish armoured vehicles. These were remnants of the defeated Polish army that was trying to escape the Germans by crossing the Hungarian border in late September 1939. This way, some 50 to 20 TK3 TKS tankettes three R-35 tanks and at least one C-2P artillery tractor were obtained. Hungary officially joined the Axis by signing the Tripartite Pact on 27th of September 1940. The first combat action of the Hungarian armoured units, as part of the combined Axis forces, was the invasion of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia in April 1941. For this operation, the Hungarians used the Fast Corps, which consisted of two motorized brigades and two cavalry brigades. The first cavalry brigade was not used during this campaign. Each of these four brigades had 18 tankettes, 18 Toldi tanks, and a company of Ksaba armored cars. In June 1941, the Hungarians joined their German allies in the invasion of the Soviet Union. Once again, the Fast Corps was used, with 60 Ansaldo tankettes. 81 Toldi tanks and Saba armored cars. By mid-November, this unit was brought back to Hungary due to extensive losses. Nearly all the tankettes were lost, while the Toldis mainly suffered mechanical breakdowns and were mostly recovered. In order to rebuild its shattered forces, the Hungarian High Command tried to implement the Huba II military plan. 
This plan involved the formation of two new units, the 1st and 2nd Armored Divisions. Despite the introduction of locally produced tanks, due to a lack of production capacity, only one armored division could be formed. Thus, the Hungarians were forced to buy German armored vehicles, some 22 Panzer IVs and over 100 Panzer XXXIII Ts, to supplement the forces of the 1st Armored Division. The 1st Armored Division was also supplemented with a small number of Toldi, Nimrods and Ksaba armored cars. This division would be mainly engaged, supporting the Hungarian 2nd Army which fought in the area of the Don River. Despite German armored reinforcements sent to the Hungarians, the Soviet advances in January 1943 led to the destruction of the 2nd Army. The 1st Armored Division, while managing to survive, lost nearly all of its armored vehicles. In April 1943, the Hungarian army initiated the Huba Free program. This was an attempt to increase the shattered armored forces. For this reason, no armored units were used on the Eastern Front in 1943. By 1944, it was obvious that Germany was losing the war. The regent, Miklos Horthy, tried to negotiate a separate peace with the Allies. This attempt was prevented by the Germans, who forced the Hungarian government to continue fighting the war. The Hungarian Turan tanks, despite being obsolete, managed to inflict Soviet tank losses. The Germans were impressed with their allies' performance and provided them with additional armored equipment, including a small number of Tiger tanks. Despite this influx of more modern armored vehicles, it was hopeless for the Axis forces. The Soviet advance could not be stopped, and by August 1944, they reached the Hungarian borders at the Carpathian Mountains. The situation for the Axis force was complicated even more by the Romanians changing sides in August 1944. Hungary launched a small offensive towards Romania with its two armored divisions, but was beaten back due to Soviet support. During this conflict in Romania, the Hungarian 7th Assault Gun Battalion, equipped with Zrini and Stug Fries, managed to inflict on the Soviets some 67 tank losses. In late 1944 and early 1945, even more German vehicles arrived to support the Hungarians, including some Jagdpanzer 38 and Panther tanks. What remained of the Hungarian armor was more or less lost during the Battle for Budapest. The last Hungarian armored offensive was undertaken by the 20th and 25th Assault Gun Battalions to support the German attack at Lake Balaton in March 1945. Initially, Germany was unwilling to provide armored vehicles to the Hungarian allies. As the Germans sustained heavy losses while fighting the Soviets in 1941, they were lacking fighting men. They were forced to rely more and more on their allies to provide additional soldiers. But as the Allied forces had inferior fighting vehicles to both those of the Soviets and of the Germans, they suffered heavy losses. The Germans had to replenish their allies' armored forces by providing them with more modern equipment. From 1942 to 1945, the Hungarians operated a number of different German armored vehicles. In 1942, the following vehicles were operated. Two Panzer I Aufs A's, one acquired in 1938 and the second in 1942. Eight Panzer I Aufs B's, possibly some command vehicles based on the Panzer I, five Marder IIs, and possibly even more in 1944, 108 Panzer 38Ts, 10 Panzer III Aus Ns, 22 Panzer IV Aus F1s, and 10 Panzer IV Aus F2s or Gs. No new German vehicles were acquired in 1943. In 1944, 10 to 12 Panzer III Aus Ms, over 50 Panzer IV Aus H, over 5 Panzer Aus Gs, over 10 Tigers and 50 Stug Free Aus Gs were received. In the last year of the war, around 20 Panzer IV Aus H, possibly a few more Panthers and around 75 Jagdpanzer 38 Ts were obtained. Of course, these numbers are different depending on the source used. Some sources indicate a small number of Panzer II Aus F were also provided by the Germans. It is worth mentioning that the Hungarians, during the war, tried to obtain a license for production of some German tanks. One of the first attempts was with the Panzer IV prior to the war, but the Germans never showed any interest in this. The situation changed by the war's end, as the Germans themselves offered the Hungarians a license for Panzer IV and Panther tanks, but nothing came from this. 
The German military insignias and markings were left unchanged. But in late 1944, the Hungarian tank crews were instructed to paint the edge of the Balkenkreuz with red paint. Interestingly, the Hungarians adopted the side skirt armor used by the Germans for their own vehicles. These side skirts were used as protection against Soviet anti-tank rifles. The Hungarians also operated a small number of French tanks sold to them by the Germans in 1942. These included 15 Hotchkiss H-35 and H-39s and two Samuel S-35 tanks. These were used to equip one of the two new 101st and 102nd independent tank squadrons. The French tanks were used in Ukraine in fighting partisan incursions and were lost in 1944 fighting the Soviets. During the fighting on the Eastern Front, the Hungarians managed to acquire several serviceable Soviet armored vehicles. These included 4 to 6 BA6 armored cars, 10 T27 tankettes, around 6 T26 and BT7 tanks, 4 M3 Stewarts, at least 1 T28 and over 10 T34, 76 and 85 medium tanks. These numbers are rough estimations as precise information is hard to find. It is also important to point out that the majority of these vehicles were not used on the front line due to a lack of spare parts and ammunition. Some, like the BA-6 armored cars, were used for anti-partisan fighting. Interestingly, a small number of Turan tanks and Zrini SPGs were left abandoned on a train near Bratislava in early 1945. These were reused by Czechoslovakia after the war for testing, but would be discarded once Soviet equipment became available. Hungarian armored vehicles were painted using a base dark olive green color combined with red-brown blotches and light ochre. From 1942, camouflage began to be applied by using spray equipment. In later stages of the war, some vehicles were painted either in dark green or light ochre color. Regarding the insignias, initially the Hungarians used a Maltese-type cross painted on the armored vehicles. In the period of 1941 to 1943, the Hungarians used a Balkenkreuz-type marking similar to German insignias. The difference was the color used, as it consisted of a red background with a larger white cross and a smaller green cross painted in the middle. Next to the cross, a Hungarian coat of arms was also sometimes painted. By the end of the war, in 1944 and 1945, the Hungarians used a much simpler white cross painted on a black square. This insignia was taken directly from the Air Force. Somewhat ironic is that this large cross made an obvious target for Soviet gunners. Similar to what the German allies had done in Poland, some Hungarian crew members simply repainted the cross or covered it with mud. A small number of Toldy medical vehicles had a white cross painted, usually on the turret sides. Hungarian armored vehicles prior to 1941 did not use any tactical unit markings. From 1942 onwards, the 1st Armored Division tanks received simple three-digit number markings, mostly influenced by the German allies. The 2nd Armored Division used four white painted digit markings, but this marking was smaller and usually only painted on the rear part of the vehicle's turret. While the painted number markings were rare, more common was the use of license plates, also quite similar to the German ones. These consisted of a white square with a capital H or 1H, a small Hungarian flag, and three digit numbers below that. This license plate was usually placed behind the engine compartment to the rear. A smaller license plate was painted on the tank's front hull. That's all for this video. Make sure to like, subscribe and hit that bell button. We'll be releasing new videos on the regular. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or Reddit. If you use Discord, there's a link to our community server in the description. And if you would like to help us continue to develop and expand, please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to help us enhance and design new articles and features for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.